if it weren't for your gum boots, where would you be? You'd be in the hospital or infirmary, cause you would have a dose of the flu or even pleurisy if you didn't have your feet in your gum boots. G'day, my name's Bruce Talford and I'm a mental health worker and I live and work in both Otago and Canterbury, South Island, New Zealand. I've put together a hands-on, number A one, really practical approach to mental health. So I hope you like it. Here's the trailer to my program. Doing the things to do list before you go to bed. Deal with any worries or concerns or problems before you go to sleep. Put on an audio book and or do a visualisation and or focus on a positive memory. Do something that you enjoy. Be realistic and to exercise within your capacity. Exercise with others. And now would be an excellent time to actually write in your weekly plan, your weekly diary, what days and what times you're going to exercise so you know it's got a good chance of happening. So that's an example of how someone could use the wellbeing plan to make sure they are getting the right amount of exercise for them and that it's scheduled so it happens. So now you could write in what is relevant to you and your situation for exercise. But if you're feeling depressed or you're just not feeling your normal self, it can be incredibly difficult to get the energy and the motivation to stay working and to stay active in your life. It's really important that if you're not currently working, that your day is full, that you are busy and that you are active. So now would be a good time to decide how much meaningful activity you currently have in your life. Are you doing things that are important to you and that you enjoy or don't they exist in your life? They need to. Let's write them in that well-being plan and get them started. When you think about your life, you have many, many emotional outgoings. You have pressure from work, you have pressure from home, you have pressure in relationships, you have obligations and responsibilities. But what are the things that actually emotionally give you energy, that restore your emotional well-being? Leisure activities tend to reduce your stress and they help to rejuvenate your psychological and your emotional energy. So the first strategy in building leisure into your life is to actually identify what are the things that help and restore my energy. What are the things that make me feel good? Next strategy, you've heard this before, but it's so important. You must plan and schedule leisure activities. One of the most debilitating symptoms with depression is low energy. Having a nutritious and well-balanced diet increases your chances for higher energy levels and feeling fitter and stronger. In addition to this, it helps to boost your immune system and to stay healthier. In terms of nutritional strategies, the first strategy is to stay well hydrated. Next strategy, choose a healthy and balanced diet. The last strategy is to have a regular eating routine. When people are feeling low or depressed, it is common for them to either lose their appetite or to overeat. That is why it is essential to plan in regular times and quality of food to eat. The quality of our close relationships has a strong influence on our mood. I think most of us can relate to experiencing low mood and distress when in conflict with our nearest and dearest. It is reasonable to conclude that positive relationships have a positive effect on our mood, while negative relationships tend to have a negative effect on our mood. A person's ability to manage difference, disagreements and conflict is going to have a big impact on the quality of their relationships. And by investing both time and positive input, you are nurturing it, which produces a great environment 
for it to flourish and go the distance. Our emotional and psychological systems are affected by the input they receive, both positive and negative. The first strategy to improve input into your life is to know the thoughts and behaviours that have a negative and a positive impact on your life. So now you can write in what is relevant to you and your situation regarding behaviour and thoughts. However, managing worry requires more than experiencing beautiful scenery. It requires being responsive, proactive and taking action. Worry is positive and useful when it spurs you on to solve problems and when it motivates you to deal with what you're worried about. So that's an example of how the worry plan could work. Now you write in what is relevant to you and your situation. Then after you've done this, every time you notice yourself worrying about the problem again, just say to yourself, what's my action plan? And stay focused on that, which will bring a greater sense of control and progress. The problem with critical and negative thoughts is it can be detrimental to your mood and performance, where generally a positive attitude and self-talk can lift your mood and your functioning. What you feed tends to grow and get stronger, and what you starve tends to get weaker and diminish. If you start feeding yourself on a diet of encouragement and support, then you are more likely to strengthen and protect your mood and improve your general functioning. Our thoughts are a bit like the software in a computer. You've heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out. The majority of computer problems are not hardware, they are software. It can be like that with us. There's often nothing wrong with our brains. However, we all have old, unhelpful programming and software from the past that can cause our system to run poorly. Sometimes this old programming is in the form of strong negative beliefs and thoughts that tend to be repetitive. These thoughts are like old software or like an old broken record that gets stuck in a groove playing the same old messages over and over. It's reassuring to know that these thoughts can be influenced and changed, which in turn can help to lift depression and improve a person's mood and functioning. If thinking influences our mood, then it makes sense that if we want to change our feelings, we need to change the way that we think. Take the time to identify a thought alert and any current negative thinking about yourself or a situation. Evaluate your thinking and create new thoughts that are more helpful, strengthening and accurate, that make you feel better. And remember to say the replacement thought out loud in your mind every time you become conscious of the old thought. So in summary, the process to change negative thoughts is this. One, become aware of your negative thinking. Two, activate your negative thought alert. Three, identify your negative thought. Four, evaluate your negative thought. Five, replace your negative thought. Six, say the replacement thought in your mind every time you are conscious of the old thought. Our expectations can have a strong influence on our emotional experience. Expectations are like promises that we make to ourselves about the outcomes we want and expect from ourselves, from others, and situations. Consider the situation you're in and review your expectations for it. It's important to identify, evaluate and change unrealistic expectations. So that's just an example of how a person could use the changing expectations worksheet. So now you could write in what is needed and relevant for your situation regarding expectations. 
powerful expectations are realistic, flexible and adaptable and enable us to function in a happier and a safer psychological way. The first thing we need to know about emotions is like the ocean, they are changeable. They are also complex and influenced by many, many variables. So often in our lives we continue to re-experience and define ourselves by emotions that are associated with past mistakes or negative situations. Firstly, identify your past negative situation or mistake. Then ask yourself, is there anything that can be done to put things right? Then ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? Then what can I do differently now and in the future because of this learning? And lastly, how will I cope with the effects of this past mistake or negative situation? By using this process, you are more likely to be able to take a positive learning from a negative past situation and thus become less affected by the negative emotions that are connected to that past situation. So now we are going to look at strategies to manage unpleasant and difficult emotions in our present. The fact is people can hurt others emotionally and we can all be sensitive and vulnerable to being hurt by this. Learning to defend yourself emotionally is what's important here. Number one, try not to react in the moment. Push the pause button on your emotions by telling yourself this is just their opinion, it's not the truth or a statement of fact. Just because they are saying this does not make it right or true. This kind of thinking will help you to press the pause button on your emotions. If you accept or take on board or change your behaviour based on what other people say to you, then essentially you are living under their control and will lose control of your emotional life. You'll become like an emotional puppet on a string with other people pulling the strings and controlling and manipulating your emotions. I suggest you don't allow this to happen and take some personal control. Practice this applied process so that's just an example of how the emotional processing worksheet could work. Now you could use it to manage a current situation which you are finding emotionally difficult. So you have a choice to make. It's either going to be you or others that are going to control and influence your emotional life. Our emotions can be affected by future situations which have the potential to negatively affect our mood. This life is also difficult, like the river trip, and it is also wise to identify any high-risk situations, triggers or warning signs for depression and low mood, and have pre-planned responses in place to manage these if they should occur. So if it looks helpful to you, and you want to learn some practical strategies to improve your mental health, then please visit the program. I hope it helps out. I'll see you there. If it weren't for your gum boots, where would you be? You'd be in the hospital or infirmary. Cause you would have a dose of the blue or even blue sea. If you didn't have your feet in your gum.